Hello again. Uh, this afternoon I thought I'd share with you um, a few of the colours that I've been using a lot recently. Um, I don't know if you can hear it, it's very dark outside at the moment. It feels a bit like five o'clock rather than uh, uh, middle of the afternoon. And it's this torrential rain, so uh, it's, it's really hitting the studio roof. Um, what I'd like to do this afternoon is I'd like to share with you uh, a couple of my favourite colours uh, that I've been using in my recent woodland painting series. Um, this follows uh, a recent blog post that I did. Um, I had quite a few people get in touch with me asking me which paints do I use and how do I achieve the mottled texture in some of the woodland scenes. So I thought this afternoon uh, it might be quite nice to share that with you. Um, so I've got three colours out that I'm using a lot at the moment um, that I'd like to share with you. The first one of these is the Raw Umber Violet. Uh, all three actually are from the Daniel Smith uh, range, but I do use other ranges. I use a lot of Windsor and Newtons and De La Rannies, others, but these are three that I'm using at the moment quite a lot um, and really enjoying. So I say the first one I'd like to show you is the Raw Umber Violet. Um, it's a really lovely warm brown um, and I'm, I've I'm using it lots and lots at the moment. So let's just pop a little bit out. Now, in its neat form, it's a really lovely, intense, warm brown. So it's, it's a beautiful colour. I'm using it lots and I'm finding it's mixing really well with, with other colours as well. Um, so I'm using it in my work quite a lot at the moment. Now if I add a little bit of water and I'll show you it in a more diluted form. It's just got this lovely soft pinky violety tinge just coming through into the brown. Um, and it's fabulous for, for woodlands, um, I'm finding. It gives it a really nice feel to the woodlands. And uh, it's not cold at all. It's got a really lovely, I love the richness of this. It's almost a bit like a conker or a chestnut colour. Um, and it, it granulates very nicely as well. So this is a colour I'm using ever such a lot at the moment um, in a lot of my uh, paintings. The next one I'd like to share with you is uh, Moonglow. Um, Moonglow is, is a, a, a lovely purple, deep purple in its concentrated form. Pop it in the palette and pop its lid back on. So let me put the other lid back on as well. Now, I don't know if you can see in the palette here, I've got some out, this is uh, in here already, um, I was using earlier on today, and where it's dried and where it's been diluted, it's separated. So you get these lovely pinks and turquoises and blues coming through as the color separates. Um, so the different pigments separate from each other. So you get a really lovely effect just from one tube of paint. So I use this a lot in backgrounds for uh, lively florals. I find it really lovely color for those. It's really, it's really good dark purple in its, its concentrated form. But then as you start to dilute it, if I, if I put a nice puddle underneath here, pop a little bit of colour into there. You, it comes through to a soft purple. Um, as you dilute it. So I find this a really useful colour and it starts to separate. I don't know if you can see already it's just beginning to separate him. Get some lovely granulation going on but I'm getting areas where I'm getting a little bit more of a pink showing through and other areas where it's going through to greys and blues um, and on the edge you can see here we've got, oh, got a lovely hint of blue just peeping through on the edge. So I use this colour lots. It's really good. It's a really nice colour I find for shadows in a landscape because as it dries you get variation so you get really interesting shadows um, just from using the, the one tube of paint. Uh, the, the next one that I'd like to show you uh, that I'm using ever such a lot um, is the Soda Light Genuine. Now this is from the, uh, the Daniel Smith uh, Primatec range um, and it's got heavy pigments in it so they separate and settle into the texture of the paper. Um, and, and it's a colour I'm using 
lots and lots i absolutely love it now i used to always mix my darks apart from um winsor newton Payne's gray I, I do like that as a, as a color but other than that i always mix my darks but this is just gorgeous it's almost black when it's in its concentrated form but then as you dilute it, it goes through more into the blues and bluey gray and it comes all the way down to a soft bluey gray a little bit more color just on there and as it dries you'll start to see that you get this lovely textured speckled granulation going on um, it, it's absolutely lovely if you like mottled granulation texture um, I, I find this a really really useful color uh, it also mixes very nicely with uh, yellows to make some nice textured mottled greens um, for landscape so that's what I'm using ever such a lot and this is one I've used in pretty much every woodland painting I've done in in the last few months during uh, the lockdown where I've been concentrating on uh, woodland scenes inspired from my daily walks the other um, thing that I use sometimes is granulation medium um, I quite like the Windsor and Newton granulation medium you get other other makes and other other brands produce granulation uh, mediums but I particularly like this one uh, I've always used this one um, now if you have a colour that doesn't granulate you can add your granulation medium and it will uh, help the colour to start to granulate and you'll get a bit of a mottled effect. If you use it on a colour that already granulates you get even more granulation and even more of a texture uh, coming through. Now I quite like it with inks, I have lots of different inks uh, but I'm going to show you on sepia just because it does work extremely well with sepia. So you can use it with, you can dilute it with water, you can use it uh, and drop it on, you can use it with a wash. Um, let's pop a little bit in the middle here so you can hopefully see it in that area. I might get a bit of a cauliflower, it's hitting those, those two damp washes. But if I pop a little bit of granulation medium in here, just push that about a bit. And then if I drop some of the ink in, you'll start to get really lovely mottled speckled effects coming through and you can add more medium on top if you want more texture so if I just drop a little bit more on top um, you'll get can you see you start to get these lovely soft variations in the ink and you'll get this lovely speckled effect of really really nice texture so if I just move my sheet across a little bit I'll put a larger area on there to show you so let's just pop that across so if I'm going to pop a little bit in here, I could do it just uh, on the watercolour paper as I have here, just, just as it is. But it's, it's really lovely mixed in with your watercolour. So if I just make up a, a wash, so if I just put in, this is the, the, the raw umber violet again. Do a nice fluid wash into that area. Let's pop a little bit of medium on the top. And if I drop a little bit of ink on, it'll just go, oh, let's grab a bit more. I need a new bottle. There we go. So I've put a nice amount of ink on here because I'm going to spread this about for you to see. So you see it's really good dark ink. Let me see in here, let's just move that light so hopefully you can see it a little bit more. Sorry, I've just knocked the uh, camera. I just pop a little bit more medium on the top it'll start to separate and I'll get really great texture so you can see here I'm starting to get lovely texture forming and this is great you can dribble it and move it about and get that texture to go where you'd like it to go so that really dark splodge of ink that I popped on you see it's, it's just separated into these lovely speckles so let's just swish that down a bit so you can see a little bit more okay. and you can get these really lovely uh, textures in here so I'm just going to quickly dry this um, so that you can have a look at it and see it uh, with it dry so you haven't got the sheen of the light onto it um, and, I, and I, you'll be able to see the proper texture on there so I'm just going to quickly dry it with a hairdryer Okay, so I've just given it a quick blast with the hairdryer to dry this off. Um, and I'm hoping you can now see this really lovely textured speckled effect that you get from the acrylic ink 
uh, with the watercolour granulation medium on the top of it. It separates into this really lovely textured effect. And on this here, I've got a little bit of the warm raw umber violet underneath and then the lovely sepia ink with the texture on the top of it. Um, and also now these have dried off. I'm hoping you can see the separation that you get in the moon glow. Um, so you can get these lovely soft turquoises and the blues coming through and soft areas of pink. But you also get areas where you have more of the purple where the two pigments are still uh, mixed together. Um, and the last one is the, the Sodalite Genuine. Um, and I'm hoping you can see now that it's dried, you get soft blues and greys, but you get a really lovely mottled textured effect um, just with your watercolour with the, just watercolour and water nothing else added into this one um, so I hope you found this interesting um, I'd say have fun with your watercolours experiment um, try different watercolours some some granulate some don't granulate um, and see the sort of pigments and the textures that you enjoy using thanks for watching